Okay, so we're still on this last transactional analysis. I just tried to break this up into three parts here. Once we've gone through and analyzed all the transactions, and then we've recorded them in their proper location so that we understand the balance sheet impact, there's a couple other steps we take in accounting just to make sure everything's recorded. On a normal basis, things are recorded in what we call the journal or a journal. Now, there's multiple journals, but we're just going to stick with the general journal. Once we record the transaction, that's a chronological listing. That's what we did the, in the last video in part two. Notice over here where we debited and credited the proper account. That's a chronological listing of events. Every single time in accounting, when you journal an entry, it is also posted to the ledger. Now, what's the difference? Well, the ledger tracks all events by each individual account. So if I wanted to see everything that happened just to cash, I would want to go to the ledger. If I needed to see exactly what offset a specific cash transaction on May 1st, then I would go up to the le uh, journal and I can see, hey, this cash for 50, what was that about? Well, we received common stock or we issued common stock. We didn't receive it. We issued it. So I can see the offset to each of our transactions. So in accounting, everything is basically booked in two locations. They're booked in a journal somewhere, and they are booked in the ledger in that. So think of the ledger as like your personal bank account. Notice when you look at your bank account, you can only see one side of the transaction, but it doesn't tell you what you bought at Walmart. All it tells you is you bought something at Walmart for a hundred bucks. Then when you turn around and look at your transaction, then you can say, oh, the receipt, right? The receipt tells you exactly what you bought for that hundred bucks, a TV. So that's sort of how you can relate it. Your receipt is your chronological listing of everything that that cash bought. Whereas your actual ledger is just that one sided looking at your bank account. You can see you spent a hundred dollars at Walmart, but you can't see the details behind it. So the accounting cycle, there's really, you know, depending on who you talk to, nine or 10 steps, but the first three, we analyze those transactions. We look to see, do they impact the accounting equation? Next, we turn around and if they do impact the accounting equation, we record them in a journal. We're going to use just a general journal in here to keep it simple, just to learn the basics. And then the third step is we post it to the ledger and the ledger there again tracks all of our balances by each individual account so that we can easily see how much cash we have, how much in supplies we have, what's our land account, things of that nature. Now the process is really easy and we're only going to take a couple minutes to do it. Once you journal, posting to the ledger becomes simple. Now we're going to use what we call T accounts just to be the simplest form of a ledger. A T account has a left and a right side. So therefore, the left side is the debit side. The right side is the credit side. So this first transaction, notice we debit cash for 50000 Debits on the left, credits on the right. So we're going to go in here, 50000 on the left side of that cash account. Notice here we credited common stock for fifty. So we're going to go down to our ledger. We're going to find common stock. Notice that is a credit. So it's going to go on our right-hand side. Then we're going to go to our next transaction equipment for 15 we're going to go to the equipment account notice that is a debit so we're going to debit our equipment for 15 and cash notice cash though is a credit it's a reduction of cash so we're going to go up here and on the right side we're going to put our cash transaction all right next one we've got land for 25 so we're going to go in we're going to debit land for 25 we've got cash of three so we're going to go here and we're going to hit our cash for that three line it up a little bit better anyway and then our notes payable for 22 it's a credit we're going to go over and hit our 22 supplies of 15 accounts payable then of 15 so posting is pretty easy we don't do it every single problem because it's sort of monotonous and tedious but you do have to understand every time a journal is recorded it is then turned around and posted to what we call the ledger all right, so I've done the supplies here. Let's go to the cash 10 and then service revenue 10. Notice I'm just following the same debit credit order, debit left, credit right, salaries, a debit of three, and then we hit cash again for another three. So be careful, make sure you do get everything in the proper space. Now, why is that important? Well, once we've journaled everything, like we did in part two of the video series here, then we post it to the ledger. 
the last or the the next step it's not the last step but the next step is to then prepare what we call an unadjusted trial balance now an unadjusted trial balance is simply a list of all of our accounts this is an example here and whether it has an ending debit or credit balance and then it tells us the total now what this allows us to do is really two things one once we get our total we can ensure that our debits equal our credits that is a key rule in accounting. The equation must balance, so therefore debits must always equal our credits. And then it uh, gives us the total here, but it also allows us to see if any account has an abnormal balance. Just a quick glance. For example, what's a normal balance? Well, cash, a normal balance would be a debit because that's what's increasing the account. So the normal balance of an account is what would increase that account. On the flip side, accounts payable, notice that is a liability account. Therefore, the normal balance of accounts payable would be a credit. So if we look down through here and anything's off, for example, you ended up with a credit in your cash for 2000 Well, that should be a red flag. You should be like, wait a minute, cash should not be negative. You shouldn't have below zero in your cash account. Doesn't mean necessarily things are wrong. It means you need to transfer some money and make sure you get that caught up. But it does indicate that there could be an issue and you need to double check okay so how do we do this well all we do is transfer the final balances so let's go in here really quickly and we'll find some balances cash for example we had 60 in debits and we've got 21 in credits so that would give us a 39,000 debit balance. Notice why did I say it's a 39,000 debit balance? Because the debit side is larger. So it's debits, netted with your credit. So 60,000 in debits, 21,000 in credits. So that gives us a net debit balance of 39. So I'm going to go to my ledger here, or excuse me, not my ledger, my trial balance here. And I will place a debit in my cash account for 39,000. Now, most of these are pretty easy because there's one transaction. We don't have to net them. Notice supplies 15. So let's split our window here. Scroll down. Supplies was a debit of 15. Land is a debit of 25. Equipment is a debit of 15. Our accounts payable, be careful, is a credit balance, which it should be, but make sure you switch over. And then notes payable is a credit of 22. Common stock is a credit of 50. Service revenues, a credit of 10, not 100,000, but 10,000. And salaries expense is a debit of three. So once we have that in there, again, to find the count balance, you take the net of the debits versus the credits. Whichever side is larger is your finished or final balance. So cash has a 39,000 debit balance because the debits are greater, okay? Now, be careful. We don't want to put both sides in here. That would not be beneficial to us. In our cash, we only want to show the final balance. I see it all the time. Students would put 60 here and 21 here. Well, that's not your balance. You need a final balance of 39. So make sure when you do a trial balance, you should only have either a debit or a credit, but not both for each account. Okay? All right. Now, the last step. In this initial process we need to add these up so you're going to take 39 plus 15 plus 25 plus 15 plus 3 i believe that's going to give us 83,500 there and the same thing here you're going to take the uh, the 1500 the 22 the 50 and the 60 and it should again give us 83,500. our debit should equal our credits and that is a trial balance we're not going to spend a lot amount of time posting to a ledger and then creating a trial balance. Understand that every time you record a transaction in accounting, it is recorded in a journal. We're going to use the general journal here, but not all account transactions go immediately to the general journal. But we're going to use the general journal. Then we post to a ledger, and then you create an unadjusted trial balance. So we've made it through analyzing transactions, recording them, posting them to the ledger, and creating an unadjusted trial balance. So we're through four steps of the accounting cycle. All right, I hope you've enjoyed these videos so far. You have a wonderful day.